it was the identification of this fragment of circuit board as belonging to a Nebo timer, the majority of which, the vast majority of which, were supplied to Libya, that will, according to the prosecution, led them first to focus their attention on Libya. Before then, the attention of the investigators, the investigative team, uh, had been on Palestinian groups and not on the Libyans. Libya had imported Toshiba radios for its domestic market. So it was plausible that a Toshiba radio bomb with a Mevo timer could also have been assembled by Libyans. This tiny fragment of timer was the crucial evidence that was said to link Libya and ultimately al Magrani to the Pan Am atrocity. In 1989, the FBI and the Federal Aviation Administration conducted a series of tests to replicate the explosion in the Pan Am jet. Any scientific test had got to be reproducible. So they had, they had exploded different bombs like that to see uh, what, what happened. Experts were later able to establish that fragments of circuit board or a timer could survive an explosion and not be vaporized in the blast. But the work of the British forensic scientist, Dr. Thomas Hayes, left one huge question about the fragment of the timer unanswered. This was a slight problem for the prosecution because Hayes had, uh, hadn't tested the fragment to see that it had, if it was, had any residue from the explosion. He hadn't thought this was important. Apparent alterations to the evidence tag raised major questions about who found the timer fragment and when. The labeling was very weird, and uh, his name appears in, in various positions, and police names seem to overwrite it or underwrite it. And it looks as if he did uh, some experimental work on this fabulous fragment before it was actually ever discovered, which is really pretty amazing. Dr. Thomas Hayes also altered the forensic logbook in which he recorded the date he discovered the time of fragment. It was obvious from his law, when he presented this law to the court, to show that it was done on the 12th of May, it looks as if that he'd inserted a page in his law, because all the pages that after it had had to be renumbered. Now this is, from a scientific point of view, a highly unsatisfactory. There's no conclusive proof that Hayes inserted the page, but to John Cameron, it's the inevitable conclusion. An evidence law is supposed to be an evidence law. It's supposed to go straight through. You can't go adding pages that uh, put them up to the might be helpful. And this is what Hayes had done. The mystery thickens. Hayes swore on oath that the date on which he dissected the collar and discovered the timer fragment was May the 12th, 1989. Thompson's evidence contradicts that claim. We have um, recovered from the German files documentation which shows that the Germans were being told that this piece of fragment here was a cover from a slalom shirt on the 22nd of January, 1990. Not only that, but the United States Department of Justice wrote a letter, and in that letter, in the Statement of Facts, they tell the Swiss authorities that that was found in a slalom shirt on the 22nd of January, 1990. The finding of the fragment of circuit board is a major problem because the Germans say it was found at one time, I, I think it was in January of 1990, but Hayes was to claim at the trial that, it, uh, that he had found it and had done work in, in May uh, of 1989. So the whole thing kind of stinks. I mean, there's, there's something going on here it's an unheard of situation. I've never had a case where you've had one time to say oh, it was found you know, nine months before, others say it was found. Somebody's telling lies. Either they're telling lies about it being found on the 12th of May 1989, or they're telling lies about it being found on the 22nd of January 1990. 